one second. And I am going to share my screen as well. So hi everyone, welcome to tutorial one for uh, uh, Oven Manufacturing Engineering One. This tutorial is on additive manufacturing. My name is uh, Anastasia Vasiliou and I will be delivering the tutorial for group three uh, together with my colleague Evangelos Daskalakis. Uh, this tutorial comprises of uh, two questions, as you will see, uh, that cover lectures one to six. Um, that were taught uh, by Dr. Marco Domingos. Oh. Oh. So the first question for our additive manufacturing um, has to do with build time um, for uh, additive manufacturing parts. I, I am aware that you've been given a PDF with the questions um, on Blackboard for you to, to, to try. Uh, some of you might have already attempted uh, them. So what we are going to do here is go through them and try to uh, go through them in details um, in order to enhance understanding. And also uh, a, a note that although this particular question, as you will see, is for a particular manufacturing process, it doesn't mean that the concept or the philosophy and the way of thinking uh, does not expand to, to, uh, to any of the AM techniques. So let's start. Um, in, in the first question, we uh, are re required to estimate the build time for a platform of dental aligners in an SLA system. The machine parameters and part information are given in table one. And this is table one. Uh, consider the height of support structure to be 10 millimeters. Okay, so the table one looks like a lot of information. Um, what I've done here is, uh, and I would uh, ask you to do that um, uh, yourselves on your own time. Take your time to read the question carefully. So here I have color coded uh, information that. Um, uh, apply to a certain feature. For instance, uh, we can see that we've been given information concerning the building platform size and uh, the bounding box size and gaps in X, Y, and Z directions. So these are all features that have to do with the, um, with the building platform and the machine we are using for uh, additive manufacturing. Um, and then we are given uh, parameters that uh, uh, have to do with the um, technique, the manufacturing process in itself, like scan speed and scan length. And then uh, what I highlight here are parameters uh, that are associated with the part that we need to construct, in this case, the dental aligners. So uh, layer thickness of support structures, layer thickness of the part, um, recall time, and uh, the height of the support structure. And uh, finally, we've got uh, we have got a pre-delay, post-delay, and startup time. So before before going to the to the details, let's uh, step back a bit and remind ourselves of um, the working principle for uh, SLA. So uh, SLA, most commonly known as a stereolithography, uh, is also called VAT polymerization. Uh, and as you can see here, this is uh, um, the figure that you were uh, uh, shown uh, in the, during the lecture. I think that was lecture two um, in the week one. And you can see here that uh, SLA uh, has a, a, a vat, in other words, a, a tank or else a container um, where we, we have liquid photopolymer um, and then this is this uh, this part here is where the part uh, the object is going to be created. So we do have this uh, uh, liquid photopolymer, and then as you see here, we have got this laser system that throws a beam, a laser beam, uh, to the scanner system, and um, through the action of a set of mirrors, the laser beam is directed to the stage, let's say, to the platform. And then what happens there is when, when the laser uh, irradiates the liquid photopolymer, a, a chemical reactor is triggered that transforms the liquid uh, polymer to a, a solid polymer. And because 
uh, AM uh, SLA also takes uh, benefits from computer integrated manufacturing, which means we know we have a 3D uh, model of the geometry and then the, um, the scanner system can uh, direct the, the, the laser beam uh, to the geometry for each layer of the part that we want to manufacture, then uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, when we manufacture each layer, we, it gets the geometry of the object we want to produce. So once the first layer is built, then the platform uh, lowers down uh, inside the, uh, and, and then, <coughs> sorry, it, the platform uh, lowers inside the, the liquid bath. And then there is this uh, recode lower, um, roller system that deposits another layer of, um, uh, 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 which, is, which has to be homogeneous. And then the process starts again. Uh, until we obtain the, the the full part, so of course at the end after the process finishes, there will be some post processing uh, of the part. Uh, we have to remove all the support structures if there are any. Um, so and some of I think I should uh, mention at this stage some of the advantages of SLA systems, which uh, include the very good resolution and the ability to build fast. Uh, at high resolution complex geometries. Uh, and the reason for building complex geometries is that we can use support structure and we do so when we have overhanging uh, uh, parts of the constructions to, so that gravity doesn't allow them to fall off. So some limitations of the of SLA technique are related to the range of the materials that can be used because uh, as you can understand from the working principle, the material has to be a, a photosensitive material that reacts when a, a beam of laser uh, uh, falls on, on it and trans to transform it into a solid part. So uh, now that we uh, reminded ourselves of the concept and the working principle, let's get back to the question. So we need to uh, construct a number of dental aligners as an example is uh, one you can see here. But then, because this uh, dental analysis has got a complex geometry, any calculation we make related to the cost or uh, the build time or anything uh, would be really complex if we consider the part with its own, uh, with, with a complex geometry. So there is a concept, a simplification we are using uh, to make all calculations uh, easier. And this is the concept of the bounding box, which is actually a cube or a, a rectangle um, that um, uh, with dimension, as you can see here, uh, BBX, BBY, BBZ, let's say. Uh, and these are the maximum direction uh, of the part at each one of the uh, X, Y, Z axis. So this rectangle encloses the part and it is uh, safer. It is a bit over, we will over calculate the times and everything a bit, but it is on the safe side. So um, the other assumption we are doing, and I think it's a reasonable one, is that uh, we can produce multiple uh, objects by using one uh, building platform. Of course, that all uh, um, uh, uh, depends on the on the dimension. So uh, the, this you can see here the, again x y z axis. You can see the bounding boxes and uh, you can see here the G, X, G, Y uh, values that I have used because, I mean, it's uh, quite logical to assume that you cannot have one bounding box next to the other. There will have to be a, a gap in between. And also another one is that uh, bounding, it is reasonable to allow uh, some space from the edges of the building platform. And this relies on the system itself. And uh, I think we should assume for the purposes of this uh, unit, what uh, that this, this um, uh, distance from the edges is 10 millimeters. And you are expected to know that because this is, this is a very typical value in practice. So this is the assumption. Um, if we see, so we saw the, the platform from a perspective view, and this uh, slide here shows the same um, the same thing from a top view. 
um, and then I put the, the the symbols and the and the some arrows to indicate the geometrical characteristics of the length along the x-axis and the length along the y-axis. So let me make this um, this uh, figure smaller and move to the, to actually sorry I, I yeah I think I I, I I I'm using a similar one with fewer symbols on to make it easier to read. Um, and then let's move to the solution of uh, question one. So before moving to calculating the build time, we need to uh, understand how many parts we're going to be able to produce. So if n is the number of parts, with nx being the number of parts along the x direction and uh, and y the number of parts that fit in uh, y direction, then uh, have we got the, all the information we need to, to to calculate that? So we know we have got the, build, the building platform size in millimeters here, as you can see uh, from the yeah, from the question uh, from the table from table one. We have got bounding box size in centimeters, and we have got a G X G Y G Z. So that's fine. What we can do is like say and write the formula down uh, what we see actually in the figure. So describe that along. So for the total length PLX of the building platform is the summation of the 10 millimeter gap from the edge plus the number of boxes along uh, uh, the X direction multiplied by the box width. And you say this is PBX plus the the width of the gap multiplied by the number of gaps and we do have one gap less than uh, we got boxes so it's nx minus one times gx plus uh, 10 another 10 millimeters from the edge so the same logic can be applied uh, for the other direction so the formula uh, for y uh, direction accompanies the one for x and it's exactly the same then if we uh, like just uh, try to expand the formula, this is what, and, and condense it at the same time, it, this is what we get, like this is a PLX equals 20 plus NX times PX, and then NX times GX minus GX. So very simple, but it is explicitly described here because one single mistake might uh, create a huge confusion. So, um, and then, we can group together the factors that are multipliers uh, of nx, and this is the formula that you get. And if we take all the, um, uh, if you allow only the variable, uh, the, the nx part, let's say, on the left, si left hand side of the formula, and transfer all the rest uh, on the other side, this is what we end up having. And then if we want to calculate nx, nx equals plx plus gx minus 20 over bbx plus gx and the same for uh, ny. So this is the formulas that you uh, have on uh, lecture uh, six. Uh, you don't have to remember them. As you saw, this is it's as long as you understand how these uh, are derived, it's very easy um, to, to calculate them uh, anytime. So let's try and substitute now the numbers uh, to this uh, to, to the formula. Uh, so PLX is six fifty, uh, GX is four, and then minus twenty over one hundred and ten plus four. And this is a, a a point that I would like to highlight that all units have to be uniform. In this case, I think it is very convenient to have everything in millimeters. So uh, yeah. Don't, don't leave it as 11, just make sure you it is uh, 110. And then the same here for uh, the value of uh, um, the bounding box size that is 12 and it is transformed in 120. And then we get, we're getting that we can uh, have uh, 5.64 parts uh, that fit in uh, X direction and 2.69 uh, parts that fit in Y direction. So, is this a logical thing? What does this uh, tell us? So we can have full, five full samples and a bit produced, but and a bit, what does this mean? This is not acceptable. So can we have six parts? No. Can we have five full parts? Yes. So I think it makes sense, like common sense to round down 
and say that we can only have five full parts on the y direction and uh, six, uh, sorry, two parts on the y direction, rounding down then, and then we go and calculate and multiply five uh, parts by two parts and end up having a total numbers of parts being 10. So this is a point that I would like to ask you to be very careful. You shouldn't go and um, multiply 5.64 by 2.69 and then round down. You have to round down before the multiplication takes place. So we are going to uh, be, we are in a position to uh, manufacture 10 parts. And then let's proceed with the rest of the, and this is the setup. So these figures here shows what, how the building platform uh, is going to look like for our uh, case. So getting back to the actual question, we need to estimate the, the build time uh, for the number of the aligners we need to produce. And the build time is uh, the summation of the scan time TS plus the recode time TR plus the delay time TE. So now uh, talking about time, we can see here in, on the left that we, uh, we are given distances, uh, mostly in millimeters, and we are given speed in millimeters per second. So how can we deduct time out of that? So just a very, very, very uh, simple reminder that velocity is a distance over time. So we need to, so in order to calculate the time for, for, uh, for scanning, the scan time, it's the, the distance actually that the uh, scanning system is going to uh, cover over the velocity, over the speed. So in this case for, 10 parts for a number of 10 parts and, we, and, and a scan length of uh, 1.56 um, per, uh, per, 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 per part, sorry, per part uh, over, uh, the, over, over the, the average scan speed, which is given here on the left. Uh, and we have to make sure that uh, we convert all um, all the units and be very treat them very carefully. We end up ha having a, a total scan time of sixteen point nine six hours. So I would uh, ask you to to do the calculations for yourself. Make sure all the units are are correct. And then when we are going to calculate the record the recall time, we have to take into account the recall time for the part and the recall time for the support structure. So. And I have here as a reminder the, the, the image of the of the setup. So for the recall time for the part, it's the um, uh, it's LP, which is the, the, the length that and it's to be covered, multiplied by TRP, which is the the time as we said for the for the part, plus the same the same calculation for the recall time for the support. So LP is the layers in the part. LS is the layers in the support, and you, we need to calculate them. So we uh, maybe you remember from the from the three D uh, image previously that the the the, the maximum let's say uh, the, uh, dimension uh, the height of the part is the height of the bounding box, and in this case uh, we we are given this uh, this value from the uh, here in the question actually. Um, and uh, this is how we deduct that the number of, um, oh, sorry, here, yeah, here, the cursor is eight centimeters and 80 in millimeters, let's remember. And this is how we can calculate and deduct the layers, number of layers in the part. Same thing for the support structure. The only difference being that the height of the support structure is not 80 anymore. It's uh, the value that we can see here where my cursor is, is 10 millimeters. So uh, substituting the numbers, we end up having 10 uh, layers for the support structure. So if we make all the calculations in the correct units, um, then we end up uh, having 2.83 hours for the recall time. And then in the same manner, if we want to calculate the delay time, um, the formula for that is uh, the one you see here, LP multiplied by 
T pre delay, the time for pre delay, the time for post delay, and uh, the time to start uh, to start up actually. So let's go and uh, make all the substitutions. So LP is uh, 1,600 layers for the part multiplied by 15, which is the pre-delay time. We know this value from table one and 10 plus 10, uh, I, we know this time for uh, table one again, um, over uh, 3,600, uh, which is to transform uh, the seconds in hours plus 0.5 hours, which is the startup time. And then we have got uh, 11.6 hours uh, as a, a delay. So um, just just to clarify something in this uh, in, in this particular one. So here for LP we have got the time for uh, the number of layers, but I haven't got included the. Uh, the, the time, I mean, I don't include the, 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 the number of support uh, of layers for the support structure because actually this is the maximum number and the time we need to construct the support structure is included in the, in the pre-delay and the post-delay time anyway. Uh, so yeah, that's why we don't, uh, and we don't, we don't have any delays for changing the material because we uh, assume that the part is made out of one material, a single material, the support structure is from the same material. So any delays that are caused are due to like, uh, you know, if we need to change the nozzle or something happens. So anything unusual that is not already taken into account in pre-delay and post-delay, this is the, uh, any other delays that we would have to take into account if there was any issue. But in this case, it's very, very straightforward, let's say. So uh, the total, so going back to the first formula at the beginning that we had at the top of the page, uh, the build time, uh, we need to add up all the, um, the values that we separately calculated and we end up having 13.39 hours uh, as a build time. And this brings us uh, at the end of question one. So are there any questions you would like to, to ask really uh, before I move to question two? Oh, I have got a question. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between pre-delay and startup time? So, so pre-delay and post-delay refer to uh, the time and the delays between every, uh, let's say, uh, before and after every layer of the material. Startup is where you start the machine and it like, so you start up only once when you start the machine for the first time and it needs to warm up and, you know, maneuver everything, put everything in place. So this is the difference between that. So uh, pre-delay and post-delay both refer to the time that takes for the, for the, um, uh, for, for the, um, sorry. Uh, so the time uh, between each yeah, layer. Yeah, be between each layer actually to take the, the, the laser beam from one side to another, let's say if you ended up to the one side of the, if the whole, you know, scanning uh, structure was at the one side of the, of the building platform to move it back to the beginning and start again. So yeah, this, these small times are, add up and are, are considered as pre-delay. And yeah. then post delay is when you have the recode and you know getting the recode roller back in place and things like that. So, okay, thank you. Any more questions? I, I mean, I'm happy to take questions later when you know at, at the end as well. So, sorry, I don't see if uh, if there was uh, anyone else asking. Please uh, unmute yourselves and go on. Uh, I cannot see any hand rising, so yeah. That's great. Yeah, I'll, I'll just proceed and then, uh, yeah, we'll, we can get back at any, at any point. So question one is in a way related to, to question two. So actually it's a continuation in, 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 a, in a sense. Uh, oops, okay. So now uh, this is about the cost model for additive manufacturing. 
So let's read carefully because it's another long one. Uh, the company was commissioned uh, with a project that requires the use of the SLA system to produce dental aligners with a maximum cost of £4,000 uh, per dental aligner. Assuming the volume of the dental aligners to be the volume of the bounding box, okay, the cost of the material per unit mass CM to be three uh, pounds per gram, the mass density to be 1.2 grams per um, centimeters cube, and KS to be 1.1. Then we need to determine the total cost of materials per batch. Okay, so we need to determine the total cost of material per batch, and this is a uh, sub question A. And then there is sub question B. And that says, assuming a machine purchase price of um, uh, uh, for a 50,000 uh, operation cost rate of, uh, and, and an operation cost rate of uh, 50 quid per hour, labor cost of uh, 200 pounds and a useful machine life of 15 years, determine the total cost uh, per batch of dental aligners. And then uh, we got the question whether this project is feasible from an economic viewpoint. So again, much information contained in this question as well. Uh, again, I would recommend if you have to uh, uh, answer a similar question in the exams or you know real life, uh, take your time to read carefully and digest information first before you uh, you rush to the to answer the question. But let's take it a step at a time. I have the question again here uh, on the left hand side of the uh, of the screen. Uh, because we will need to, to get back uh, and uh, retrieve information. Um, because we are talking about the same platform with the same uh, number of uh, dental miners that are uh, that can be produced, uh, it's n equals to 10, and I put it here at the bottom as a reminder. So as you've seen at the lecture six, which is the... Uh, cost calculation one uh, for additive manufacturing. Uh, if M is the cost of material per batch, then this is, and this uh, that uh, this one I put here uh, at the top is the generic formula. So in general is, um, uh, is uh, um, let's say this uh, coefficient that uh, a KS, which is uh, the coefficient that takes into account costs for support material, multiplied by KR, which is a coefficient that takes into account costs for additional material consumption. Uh, and this is for uh, powder processes, not for SLA. Uh, but this is something that if, yeah, if you ever have to encounter, this is the, the, the time to include this information. But okay, I, I crossed this out because uh, it doesn't apply in our case multiplied by the number of parts, multiplied by the volume part, multiplied by CM and density. And CM is the unit uh, material per unit mass. And yeah, this is the density. So let's go and have a look and see if we have this information given from the question. So KS, let's check on this box. KS is equal to 1.1. So this coefficient we do know. And as we said, we calculated previously on question one. Uh, and then let's move on to calculate the, um, uh, the volume per part. So this, as we said, the assumption is the volume for part is the volume of the bounding box. And this is given uh, from the question here. But as we said, lacking any other information, this is the uh, only reasonable um, assumption that brings us uh, on the safe side. Uh, so we do have all the information required and we can uh, make the calculation and we have a volume uh, per part being uh, 1056 uh, centimeters cube. So now, uh, and we we know the density as well. Here, here is the density, 1.2 uh, grams per centimeters cube. Again, in this case, uh, the, the units were, that were used were centimeters uh, cube only because most of the values were in that units and we need to make sure everything is uniform. And then by substituting all the values, uh, we end up having a um, total cost of materials per batch of uh, 41,817.6 pounds. 
So let's move on to this. And, and that addressed uh, question 2A. So moving on to question 2B. Uh, so we have we have some limitations and we need to uh, go and check whether the, the project is viable and calculate the um, uh, let's say we need to, to determine the, the most yeah the all the costs and make sure whether the check whether the, the project is feasible from an economic point of view. So we need to calculate now the batch cost, which uh, as you know again from your lectures, and also it makes sense, is the summation of the um uh, of P, which is the purchase price for one build. O, which is the operational cost, and uh, sorry, O is the operational cost, uh, M is the cost of materials per batch, and uh, L is the labor cost. So let's uh, take these, uh, these um, uh, variables one by one and see uh, if, how, if and how we can uh, calculate those. So P, which is the purchase, purchase price for one build, is a, um, the purchase, um, that is the purchase price multiplied by, uh, by uh, the build time, which we calculated in the previous uh, question. Uh, so, um, and then uh, it is over a number of 0.95. And 95 means uh, 95, the assumption is 95% uh, uptime. And we assume the Masil bits part 95% of the time during an, a year. So this is something that we should take, uh, take like, uh, it, it is a safe assumption and we always use this number unless uh, stated otherwise. Uh, and this is uh, 25, multiplied by 24, by 365, and this is uh, the number of hours in a year, uh, multiplied by the useful machine li life, which is Y. So let's attempt to substitute these, these values. So the purchase price, we, uh, we have got that from the question. It's here in orange where my cursor is, multiplied by the, the build time, which we calculated in the previous question, and it is uh, 31.39 over uh, 0.95 by, times 24 times 365 times uh, 15. And 15 is the only unknown, let's say, uh, variable which uh, we are given here in the question, uh, machine life, useful machine life of 15 years. All right, and that gives us uh, 113 point two uh, pounds per batch as um, the value of P. Moving on, uh, let's calculate the operation cost. And that, that would be, uh, as we can see here, uh, the build time TB uh, times the operation cost rate. Um, oh, and just as a reminder, when we talk about operation cost, that can include uh, things like the, the uh, factory floor, for instance, uh, space that we are using uh, and, you know, and, and to have our machine in, the electricity, uh, utility costs, you know, whatever uh, operation, co you know, wh whatever cost is involved uh, to facilitate running the, the machine. So, uh, and we, and there is this uh, C0 factor uh, to take uh, that into our account. Uh, and we see here, um, yeah, this is the calculation for O. So 1,569.5 pounds per batch is, is the number we end up uh, having for uh, operation cost. And then uh, the batch cost in that case is a summation of uh, all of the above. And then if we make the calculation, we end up having 14,700.3 pounds per batch. So if we want to calculate the cost per dental aligner, it's the past cost, cost over the number of aligners. And in this case is the cost we just uh, derived over 10, uh, which makes a uh, cost for per dental aligner to be 4,370.03. Uh, and this means that this, the cost per aligner is more than 4,000. And that was the constraint we had for that uh, project. 
And the result is that the project is not feasible from an economic viewpoint. Um, and actually, that brings us to the end of tutorial one. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to take, shall I, uh, Evangelos, shall I stop the recording now and take any questions? Yeah. Yeah, let's, uh, let me. And stop. also, if you could go back, because some uh, of the students, they were, uh, they left, I think, maybe to internet connection. Mm -hmm. if, you could, if you could go back and, and uh, show them the results. I don't know if uh, Marco is going to upload the results of the tutorials. Mm -hmm. Is he going to upload them? I think so. Yes. So I think, ah, okay. I think, I think the results will be uploaded as a, as okay. a PDF which okay. will be a condensed form and okay. also as a i think i think the powerpoint will also be available i think so okay. Okay. but yeah In i'm happy, case, I'm happy yeah. To, to go back uh, if, yeah yeah i don't know if the students they want to check again the results yeah mm -hmm. it's up to them yeah yeah thank you so thank you uh let me stop the recording and i'm happy to to go through the results again uh, if you want we do have like 15 minutes uh to go so um before before any uh, lecture you might have. So thank you, thank you everyone. Let me stop now. Uh, do you stop the cloud recording?